visualization drawing. Ideas usually form in our minds and then we have to transfer those ideas from our minds onto a piece of paper or onto a computer. But can we learn this process? Can we improve it? This video attempts to show you how. So this exercise is one of my favourite exercises from Drawing for Science. And this is called King Olaf's Mad Machines. And in it, you are going to be given this sheet, kind of like a design tech thing really here. We've got springs and wheels and handles. We've got cams. Don't worry if you don't know what a cam is or what it's for, it doesn't matter. We've got string and fishing wire, cogs, levers, pulleys, just about everything you would need to create and invent a mechanical machine. Essentially, you're going to invent a machine using these things on the sheet. Now, there's some rules to this. Um, you can only use what's on the sheet plus three extra items of your choice. Now, I don't just want you to design any old machine. What I'd like you to design is some silly machines to satisfy King Olaf's crazy demands. And one of the things he's decided is that he doesn't like all of the sheep in his kingdom having curly hair. He's decided he wants all of his sheep to have straight hair. And he's asked you to design a machine that could straighten the hair of the sheep. The scientist, the mathematician is like the artist. They will draw them out. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to visualize and invent the machine in your mind and then draw it out and see if it will work. So I need a sheep hair straightening machine. So the first thing to do is to draw some sheep. There is my sheep. Okay, now, what can I use to straighten the sheep's hair, which is all curly? Well, I could use some hair straighteners, couldn't I? And I have three items that I can choose. So I'm gonna get some hair straighteners. Um, what do hair straighteners look like? They just look like two plates like that into like a pair of tongs, aren't they? Like that. Yeah, and you can even just say hair straighteners just to make it clear what they are if you're not confident about your drawing skills. Um, but clearly we need something to hold this up and we need something to hold it in place and be able to move it up and down and across. So I've got some sticks and rods and I've got some, uh, some planks of wood so I'm going to make a base for my hair straighteners with a plank of wood and then I'm going to get some sticks like this and fix that to it and then I'll have another stick maybe I could make that stick go right across there and that would allow me to move backwards and forwards wouldn't it
but I'm, I'm nearly there. I can now move it up to the sheep. I can squeeze it in and out with my metal plates and I can move it across. We need to know whether this is going to work. And the only way we're going to see if it's going to work is if we try to build it and try it on some sheep. But we can't do that. What we can do is we can peer review it. I can tell you straight away the problems where my design lies. My design doesn't tell the sheep where to go. So the sheep are just gonna wander all over the place. There's nothing to make them go through this little thing that I've built. So I would probably need a fence of some kind. I'll just quickly do that. Like they do in a sheep dip and where the sheep now would all be able to go through that. So that's solved that problem. We need to also hold them in place while they're having the hair straightened. So maybe, like a sheep dip, they have a barrier at the front and a barrier at the back that holds them in place. We've made a drawing, we've made a start, what a, what a mathematician would do, what a scientist and an engineer would do, is they'd now go away and improve their design and bring it back. And they'd be modifying their design all the time like this until they had a working model on paper. And when they've got the working model on paper and they've peer reviewed it, they can try and build it.